Let us look at some of the words before we uh, start this webinar. Stimulus is the external signal to stimulate a device through the I.O. ports and registers. In other words, a stimulus is something from outside that might affect the behavior of a device. There are two kinds of stimulus in a simulator. We are only going to look at one here, and it is asynchronous stimulus. The word asynchronous simply means that the user can cause this stimulus to happen any time during the simulation. Everything is done in a window called stimulus window. There are six tabs on the window in which you can define both the asynchronous and synchronous stimulus. The stimulus settings can be saved into a workbook file for future use. Here is an overview of the steps to use asynchronous stimulus. Stimulus is available for simulator only. So before you can use stimulus, you need to start the simulator by selecting Debugger, Select Tool, MPLAB Sim from the menu. Then select Debugger, Stimulus, New Workbook from the menu to bring up the stimulus window. Alternatively, you can use Open Workbook to load your existing stimulus definitions. Then click on the last tab of the stimulus window. This tab is all you need for the asynchronous stimulus. You may save the asynchronous stimuli anytime into a workbook by either clicking on the Save button at the bottom or selecting Debugger, Stimulus, Save Workbook from the menu. This step is optional, meaning you don't need to save it before using the stimulus. Then run or step or animate your application in the simulator. At any time, you can click a fire button on the window to cause an asynchronous stimulus to happen. This implies that the stimulus window must be kept open as long as you want to use the stimulus. You might then run or step or animate the application a few more times and click the fire button again. There are six tabs on a stimulus window. The first five of them are for synchronous stimulus, and we are not going to use them in this session. The last tab of the stimulus window looks like a spreadsheet. Below the header, each row represents an asynchronous stimulus. In this diagram, for example, there are five asynchronous stimuli. The first column is the fire button column with the arrow symbol for each stimulus row. By clicking on this button, the user can cause the asynchronous stimulus to happen once. In our terminology, when you click the button, you fire the asynchronous stimulus. Initially, the arrow symbol does not appear on a new row. It will show up as soon as all the elements of the stimulus on the row are defined, and you click the mouse away from the cell. So when you see an arrow symbol, you can fire this stimulus. If you don't see it yet, something might still be missing. The second column is the destination where the stimulus will be applied to when you click the fire button. As we can see in the slide, pins like T0 clock input, interrupt 0, and RA0 are used in the first three rows. To choose the destination, click on any cell in the second column and it will turn into a drop-down list. You will see the long list of the I.O. pins that are available for the input signal. Note that the output pins are not included in the list. Different device has a different set of input pins. Please refer to your datasheet for more information. In addition to input pins, the receive SFR for the UART is also available to receive the asynchronous stimulus. So you will see something like RC reg at the end of the drop-down list if the device has a UART support. We will talk about it more in the next slides. The third, fourth, and fifth columns are for action, width, and units, respectively. Again, Clicking on the action cell will give you a choice of all the actions available for this destination. 
For the I.O. pin, there are five choices available. You can set the pin high or low, or you can toggle the state of the pin, or you can pulse high or pulse low for a certain period of time. Width and units are only available for pulse high or pulse low action. You can enter a decimal number for the width and select the time unit from the cycle nanosecond, microsecond, millisecond, and second. When pulse low high is selected, the system will fill in one cycle as the default. After all the elements of the stimulus are defined, press the tab key or use the mouse to click in the comment field and the arrow symbol will appear. Optionally, enter your comments to describe what this stimulus is for. This comment will show in the output window when it is being fired. In the case above, when the user clicks its fire button of the first row, T0 clock input will toggle its state. Likewise, in 0 will become high regardless of what it was previously. For RA0, after the fire button was clicked, if it was high, it will become low for two cycles, then go back to high. On the other hand, if it was low, then nothing will happen. For UART receive register, such as RC reg, you can inject a message of characters to the UART by clicking the fire button anytime. Such message will be fed to the UART according to the baud rate configuration. The content of a message is specified in the last column, the comments message column. For RC reg, there are two ways to specify the message to be used. The easiest way is to select direct message in the action cell and then specify the text string and close it by double quote in the comment slash message cell. As shown in the last row of the diagram, characters H E L L O space W O R L D will go to RC reg character by character according to the baud rate setting. If the UART is not turned on, or the receive buffer of the UART is full, then the pending characters will be lost, as in the real hardware. Instead of using quote string, alternatively, hexadecimal number separated by space could be entered. For example, 48 space 65 space 6C, etc. could be entered. This is a way to include a control character like carriage return in the message to the RC reg. If you want predefined messages to be injected to RC reg in a specific order, you may put them in a text file. Select file message in the action cell and click on the comment message cell to specify the message file. A Windows file selection box will pop up for you to choose the file. For example, in the fourth line in the diagram, each time the fire button is clicked, the next line will be read from the data file message.txt and be injected to RC reg. For more information of the format, please consult the help file message based data file description in MPLAB. That's all you need to start using the asynchronous stimulus. Let's summarize what we have learned in this session. We have outlined the steps to use the asynchronous stimulus. We have shown you how to define a stimulus to an I.O. pin and to UART receive buffer. We hope this session will help you debug your application with simulator using stimulus. Please give us feedback by visiting our webinar website and click on the feedback link what you think about us.